So what's happened in Brazil? I won't go through the whole history, of course, but just recently. Uh, in uh, 2003, uh, they elected uh, Lula da Silva uh -huh. uh, president. He's a uneducated uh, union leader, a very uh, a remarkable person. I knew him back in the 90s, followed him closely. He's a very remarkable person, uh, very effective. You don't take my opinion. Uh, the World Bank published a study of uh, Brazil in 2016, uh -huh. May 2016, uh, in which they discussed what they called the golden decade, a unique period in Brazil's history under Lula's two terms, 2003 to 2011, uh, a period in which there was remarkable uh, uh, improvement, uh, poverty reduction, enormous poverty reduction, uh, ex large expansion of ex inclusiveness, uh, marginalized. Po Remember, these are very unequal countries, yeah. rich but incredibly unequal, enormous poverty, tremendous resources yeah. wasted, uh, inclusion of uh, people, um, Afro-Brazilians, almost half the population, indigenous people and women brought into educational institutions, a sense of dignity, of commitment. The country just changed. They say it's a remarkable example of uh, development rarely equaled. At the same time, Lula became probably the most respected statesman in the world a very respected statesman as a voice for the global south, respected everywhere. Literally. I remember visiting Brazil. It seemed like, yeah, it seemed okay. like the well, a, a beacon. Yeah, it was in a remarkable period. Well, uh, Brazilian elites couldn't tolerate this. And not only the... Pro First of all, he was very supportive of establishment institutions. He didn't um, interfere with didn't the wealth robbing it, yeah. the country, you yeah. know. He didn't. He paid off the debts to the foreign investors. He satisfied the IMF. Uh, he's not a radical. Yeah. Um. His beliefs pretty straight. Are you just put money in the hands of poor people? That'll take care of things. That's his radicalism. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, for the Brazilian elite, who are outlandish, uh, all the Latin American elite, this is intolerable. Furthermore, there's enormous class hatred. Uh, how can this uneducated uh, a worker who doesn't even speak proper Portuguese uh, dare to be uh, sitting in the presidential mm -hmm. palace. You know, we can, these people have to have humility. Uh, we'll take care of them, that sort of thing. That's deeply rooted all throughout Latin America, uh, and Brazil in particular. Anyhow, as soon as he, uh, after, a couple of years after he stepped down, the oil prices dropped and the commodity prices dropped with yeah. China cutting back yeah. development. There's a lot of claims that the improvements under uh, his uh, rule were just uh, illusory. That, yeah. But the World Bank didn't agree. That you look at their analysis, they say that's not true. Uh, in fact, if you look more closely, I've written about this, the and Brazilian economists have written about it. The, it was the mainly the predatory financial institutions who prevented any sensible reaction to this. Every effort that was taken was beaten back, and it did lead to a recession. That gave the opportunity for the soft coup that's been going on since then. The first step was to impeach his successor, Dilma Rousseff, on absolutely derisory grounds. I mean, you look at them, it's not even a joke. And she was impeached by a gang of thieves uh, uh, the, of a sort you can't even describe. And that was the first step. Then comes the next just a couple months ago, uh, there was an election coming up in October, October mm. 2018. Lula was way ahead in the polls. It was pretty clear he was going to win the election. So what they do? Put him in jail, solitary confinement, 25-year sentence, basically a death sentence, prevented from reading newspapers and journals, and crucially, prevented from making a public statement. Not like murderers in death row. Yeah. This is right before the election. Next step, which is, uh, we should look closely because it's a test run for the 2020 election here. Yeah. A massive campaign on the social media, which are the main source of information for 
most of the population. The press is, of course, mostly right wing, but mm-hmm. these are. But the media campaign is just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the lies, the fabrications, the vitriol. You know, the the Workers' Party, his party, is planning to turn every all the boys into homosexuals. It's they're going to kill religion. Uh, they're going to uh, put out baby bottles with uh, penises as the uh, nipples, you know, on and on like this. Uh, people believed it, you know. They finally managed just by these means, you know, shut up, silence the guy who's going to, probably going to win, uh, flood uh, the so-called information system with grotesque lies and uh, attacks that can't be responded to. And remember, we're going to see this soon. We're starting to see it already. This is Testron. Uh, they managed to get into office a guy who's the most outrageous of the right-wing fanatics all over the world. Now, just to illustrate, uh, this is a guy who, when he, he was in the parliament, when he voted for the impeachment of Dilma Rousseff, mm-hmm. he dedicated his vote to her torturer. She was a guerrilla tortured by the military regime. He dedicated his vote to her torturer, the general who was in charge of the torture. Huh. He supports the military dictatorship, which was vicious, mm-hmm. but with but he criticizes it too, because it didn't go far enough. He said it should have it should have it was too soft. They should have killed thirty thousand people, like the Argentines did, the worst of the military yeah. dictatorships. Yeah. He goes back to the nineteenth century, and cri- criticizes the Brazilian cavalry because they didn't do what the Americans did, wipe out the indigenous population. If they'd done that, we wouldn't have these problems today. Uh, in fact, now that he's in office, uh, first of all, he's, his economics advisor is a ultra-right Chicago boy, Pablo yeah. Guedes. His motto is literally privatize everything, sell the country out to mostly foreign investors, uh, Kill, right now they're killing the social security system, which is not that strong, but something. Uh, uh, hand everything over to the rich and the powerful. Uh, the newest legislation is uh, change the history books so that they don't criticize the military dictatorship. They say it was necessary to protect the country from communism. Uh, he says the whole country has been taken over by what's called cultural Marxism including the right-wing press, uh, the universities. We've got to block that. Science is finished. We don't support that. We don't waste money on that kind of stuff. So, so the Brazilian science is pretty powerful, interesting thing. It was People upcoming. In- trend. So, I mean, uh, this is just indescribable. And it's happening in the most powerful country, important country in uh, Latin America one of the most important in the world, with the strong support of the United States. Very powerful. In fact, this media campaign, you can't prove it, but it has all the fingerprints of uh, the people who've been running these things elsewhere.